Who Charted. My name is Manish Kata with Dan Russo. Sir, let's get after it. All right, six charts in six minutes. Let's go. This market has been so bifurcated, at least in people's minds. It's either growth or value. It's either large caps or small caps. Well, if that continues to be the case, it probably makes sense to be paying attention to growth, growth broadly, you know, kind of drill into that how you, however you wish. Uh, but after essentially going nowhere uh, for over a year, the ratio of growth stocks to value stocks is uh, breaking through near-term resistance and on the verge of actually trading to a new high. It's trading above its 50-day moving average. And what's interesting here is we do have a bit of a momentum confirmation. The 14-period RSI is breaking a downtrend line and moving towards an overbought condition. So to me, that's a signal that there's some momentum behind this move recently. And if the theme of 2021 is constant rotation, it looks like a rotation back into the growth areas of the market could be at hand. This is one we should be paying close attention to. Dow theory. It's sta- there's many parts of it, but at its core, it states when the Dow Jones makes a new high that's confirmed by the transports, that's a bullish signal. Like anything, we don't believe that you should follow one system, one indicator. You should vary and look for confirmations. Well, this recently gave a buy signal. It continues to tell the story that this is broad market. Within the Dow itself, there's only about 18% that's technology. Uh, the rest of it's made up of uh, a lot of pro cyclicals, financials included, uh, industrials, healthcare, etc. So, once again, this adds more um, fuel to the fire that the bull market is intact and likely heading higher with more and more buy signals flashing every day. All right. Two weeks ago on this show, uh, we were talking about the fact that everybody was in love with the inflation trade, the cyclical trade. And, you know, Dow theory kind of shows you that that's still very much alive. But what we said at the time was don't sleep on the NASDAQ, right? Whether you're looking at the NASDAQ 100 or even the NASDAQ composite index. Uh, And over the course of the past two weeks, um, the NASDAQ composite and the NASDAQ 100 have both ticked at and last week closed at uh, all time highs. So drilling down. Uh, within those pockets of the market that are showing some strength. Two key areas uh, that we're going to focus on. First, software and services. Uh, Software and services, part of the S&P 500, traded at an all-time high. Uh, Closed that way on Friday. Uh, Had a breakout about a week and a half, two weeks ago. It is trading above its 50-day moving average, which is rising. So in the intermediate term, uh, we were above a, a rising trend. So by all definitions, an uptrend and now breaking to new highs. And interestingly, after pulling back to test its 50-day moving average on a relative basis, software and services is starting to move higher once again. One of my favorite charts, S&P 500 on the top with a NYSE 21-day breath indicator at the bottom. Essentially, the market has been very choppy since the start of summer. As you can see, the S&P made highs through July and August, but the 21-day breath indicator was bouncing around zero uh, and went negative for periods of time as well. What's happened since then is as the market has uh, made new highs, you can see that the 21-day breath indicator continues to improve. In my mind, this is resolving that chop that took place, and this is strength. Uh, Counter to this, when you see the market at a new high and and you maybe see a negative reading on the 21-day breath, that's something that you want to pay attention to in terms of adding risk management. At this point, it's trending higher along with the market. Uh, you know, all systems go here for the continuation of the bull market. And it would appear that the bull market is not going to leave behind uh, one of the most talked about areas uh, of the market under the surface. I mean, how many times have we heard about semiconductor shortages? Uh, Nobody can get parts. Apple talked about it. All the car companies are talking about it. But we look at the S&P 500 semiconductors as well as the equipment index. So combining those two, uh, similar to software, Uh, went out at a new high on Friday. Also a breakout last week as well and holding above the breakout level, the green line that's on the screen there, above an upward sloping 50-day moving average and actually on the verge of a breakout uh, on a relative basis. So this one kind of checks two boxes for me. First, checks the box that the NASDAQ is strong and we should still be focused there and not just on the inflation area of the market. And also checks the box of check your narrative at the door. We've heard about semiconductor shortages. We don't care. Look at this chart. New new all-time highs are bullish. Just follow the price, dummy. The forgotten asset class. Dan and I have talked a lot about commodities, and you you hear about it in terms of uh, what's going on with inflation. When I started in this industry, there was three asset classes, stocks, bonds, and commodities. And rightfully so, you know, commodities ripped from 2003 to about 2008. 
Then it went through a 12-year 75% drawdown. And I think this is the forgotten asset class. I think institutional and retail investors are, are under allocated to this asset class and it's probably going to end up hurting them. Look at the blue sky we have here. We're not even remotely close to our 2008 high with inflation fears running rampant and the rally that we've had so far in commodities. Uh, you know, they're, they're, like I said, there's a lot of blue sky here. So, you know, one would expect this thing to continue and has a lot of room to run. And, you know, most people are under allocated. So it's something to take a look at. Excellent. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for carving out some time to be with us on Who Charted. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. We will come back to you uh, in a couple weeks with updated thoughts. Thank you.